definitely, definitely going to want to be thinking about how to stay cool tomorrow. We're actually under a heat advisory. Yeah, back into that territory where we're late June, mm -hmm. when the heat and the humidity combine to just make really oppressive conditions outside. That's what the next seven days is setting up wow. to be. So this is important. It's important to be prepared for this. I wish we could have had a longer break like we had yesterday, but that's just not in the cards. 98 degrees tomorrow is going to be accompanied by some stifling humidity. So the heat index, what it's going to feel like in the afternoon will be as high as 110 in some spots. This is a computer model of what the feels like factor will be, meaning the stress that the heat and the humidity combined will have on your body at 3 p.m. tomorrow. Because of that, heat advisories, excessive heat warnings are in place for a good portion of our area throughout the day on Wednesday. Heat advisory is in orange. That excessive heat warning is in pink. The difference there is how high the heat index get. The excessive heat warning, the pink over towards Paris, Tennessee, that's for heat index values as hot as 110. It's brutal. And it looks like we may have more of these issued for the weekend because more heat looks to surge in by Saturday and Sunday. So clearly heat has been a huge focus for us this summer and all this week we're working hard to make sure that you understand just how hot Nashville's getting and what kind of impact that has on you. So last night I explained how Nashville is an island, an urban heat island, meaning that the buildings and the pavements that we've got downtown cause our downtown space to be hotter than the outlying green spaces. Now to learn even more about this, the city is actually taking part in an urban heat island mapping campaign. It's really cool. Storm 5 meteorologist Henry Rothenberg is here to explain exactly what that is and how you can take part. When driving through downtown Nashville, say along James Robertson Parkway, some may enjoy the view of the grassy median, the pretty trees along the way, but these things are so much more than just a pretty scene. They provide relief from the dangerous heat. As we head into the hottest months of the year, areas like downtown Nashville, North Nashville, and places with a lack of green space pose a real threat when it comes to heat. When we look at heat waves um, and also extreme weather events in particular, they tend to disproportionately impact communities of color. It's because of these disproportions that Nashville has been selected as one of 14 cities to participate in the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA's, Urban Heat Island Mapping Campaign. The campaign, which started in 2017, works with cities and volunteers to gather temperature and humidity from special sensors attached to volunteers' vehicles during three specific times of day. This is really exciting because a lot of cities apply for this and only a few are chosen. And the exciting part is that we actually get to get street level data on heat throughout the urban core. The goal of gathering this data is to determine the locations of Nashville where the heat island caused by lack of green space and lots of concrete and buildings are and work with communities to help correct that. So how do we do that? There's two different parts. We can mitigate heat, so we can actually reduce the amount of heat in an urban area by planting more trees, removing some concrete, um, anything to really make it less, lots of packed buildings, lots of concrete. And then the other part is adaptation. So when the heat is actually here, how do we make sure our bodies cool down, make sure that we aren't taking on too much heat at once. And so that can be one parks and misters, it can be cooling centers. There are already two organizations working on issues of concrete and planting more trees. Route Nashville and Cumberland River Compact are actually breaking up pavements. They have a program called Depave. So they'll break up pavements and replant that for more vegetation. And that is really helpful in reducing urban heat. The other thing that some places are doing, I know MTSU has done this, uh, University of Tennessee has this, is that they will remove concrete and actually put permeable pavers down. So that allows water to actually infiltrate through the soil, you'll have evaporative cooling, and it really just helps to reduce the Along with adding green space, there are additional strategies the city is considering for this city on the rise. Two strategies I think that are particularly well suited to explore. Um, for a growing city would be um, cooling pavements as well as green roofs and vegetated roofs. I think with either of those measures, again, understanding um, where they're most functional and feasible is really important. And those are definitely strategies um, that could be deployed, uh, again, where circumstances um, would, would be uh, suitable for that. 
Um, and this heat mapping information could help us understand where those types of installations are most necessary. Heat sensing will take place in the early morning, early afternoon, and late at night. The city is hoping for up to 500 volunteers for this project that is expected to take place in August. If interested in volunteering your time or your vehicle for this project, just head to newschannel5.com to sign up.